In this video we're going to show you how to model the frame that you can see in the image here. I'm going to start by doing um, just a quick overview of how the vectors were generated um, for the design but we're not going to actually go through the whole process of drawing those. We'll then import the set of vectors in and then we'll look at doing a two rail sweep for the inner part of the frame and some of the things we might need to address to get a smooth transition around the corners and to ensure we can mirror this to create left and right and top and bottom copies. Then we're going to look at how we can take a set of vectors and use those as paths that we can extrude other components along so that they'll both follow the shape of those vectors and also interact with other parts of the selection to make it appear that the shapes we're generating are intertwined or weaving with each other. So let's go ahead and begin by starting a new copy of Aspire. So let's click on the icon to create a new file. I'm going to set up a job which is 15 inches wide by 20 inches high by 1 inch thick, uh, material Z0 top of the block, um, XY datum we're going to set to be in the centre, modelling resolution very high, working in inches and we're going to hit the OK button. Next I'm going to come over and click on the icon to import a bitmap for tracing and I'm going to select from the project folder this file called Art Nouveau Mirror.jpg and hit open. With that still selected, I'm going to click on the icon to set the selected object size. I'm going to increase the height to 18 inches, hit apply and close. Now I decided with this example what I really wanted to focus on was the kind of sweeping shapes rather than worrying about the pictorial elements like the birds, the flower and the face. So mainly I was looking to create the vectors that I would be able to use in order to do the two rail sweep and the extrudes to create those. Just to give you an idea of the sort of type of way that would work to generate those type of vectors, first thing I'm going to be concerned with is the center point. So I'm going to click and drag a couple of guidelines across here. Then we may come over and pick something like the curve, draw curve icon and I would snap onto the center line there and then just work my way along in order to draw a curve like we can see there. Now if I zoom in on that Maybe that we need to fade this even a little bit more so we can see that vector and then it's just a case of going into node editing and starting to adjust that accordingly. Now obviously this can take a reasonable amount of time and also there's a number of subjective decisions to make while you're doing this type of layout with regard to the design itself. So you've got the gist though of the basic way that that's done. So now if we were just to take and delete that and come up and go to import vectors within the project folder there's an EPS file called frame vectors and if you hit open you can actually see the set of vectors that I created here. So if we look a bit closer here maybe we'll need to again to just change the properties of this just to make it a bit clearer. You can see that the shapes don't exactly match the frame and as I say I made some design decisions because I'm doing things like missing out the birds I decided to change the layout of where the paths were going to go here. Also you realize that the center of your image may not exactly be in the center of your job. In this case you can see we'd probably want to move this up a bit to get it to line up a little bit better and move it across there as well. So now you can see kind of the path that I've chosen to follow. It doesn't exactly follow the design that we've got here. I've just used that as a rough guide and then I've made my own subjective decisions about how I want my design to look. Again at the top here I've made a more complex um, shape because we're not going to be trying to replicate the face. So at this stage we're kind of done with the image for the moment. So let's just click on the um, down arrow here. We'll switch off the bitmap layer and I'm actually going to right mouse click and delete layer 1 and just rename this layer um, and we'll call this actually the extrude paths and then I'm going to close that and I'm going to take these 
four vectors here, so the two that are making up the inner frame and the cross sections that I've created there, right mouse click and move those to a new layer and we'll call that layer inner frame. Maybe we'll just change the colour of that just to make it slightly noticeable that it's on a different layer. Now let's focus on that inner frame layer. So we'll switch off the extrude pass layer. I'm going to select the inner frame layer so it's current. And then we'll just grab this and we'll zoom select it here so we're nice and close to it. So this represents our first um, set of vectors we're going to use to calculate a 3D shape. So we've got two rails and two cross sections. Let's tile the window so we can see what's happening. Let's just reselect this and zoom in again there. So we've got our 3D view on the right, 2D view on the left, and let's just take the basic vectors I've created here and calculate a shape. And then we'll look at some of the things we're going to need to adjust um, depending on the look that we'd like to get. Go to the modeling tab, I'm going to select the outer vector, shift and select the inner vector and click on the two rail sweep icon. I'm going to click the use selection button and the first thing to check is that the start points are adjacent and the arrows are flowing in the same direction. Now what I want to do is go from this low cross section here, so I'm going to select that and click to add that to the start and end points to this higher cross section here which I'm going to come in and click to add in the middle and then I'm just going to drag the end point of that so that it's roughly um, across the centre of the middle of our corner. Next I want to check a couple of the settings here, I want to make sure scale cross sections with width is unchecked, I'm going to use the height of the um, vectors that I've drawn here to dictate my shape. Sweep between spans is fine, it'll ignore that because there's a different number of spans on each cross section. We can see that by these numbers shown in the middle here, the 4 and the 3. I'm going to set this to merge and I'm going to call it inner frame and hit apply. Now if we zoom in to the 3D view I can see that looks quite nice and I may um, be completely content with the way that looks. Now I'm not wild about it because it's got this line running across it and I would expect that given the way that we've got the transition going through the corner here. Now the way that we can look to change that is maybe to introduce a radius on the inside here so that we don't have it coming to a point. So let's just hit reset and close and we'll go to the drawing tab and I'm going to select the create fillets icon here and let's set a value of 0.15 of an inch normal fillet and I'm just going to come over look for the check mark there and click to add that radius on my um, inner part of the frame. Now if we recreate our two rail sweep so we select it shift select the two vectors and hit the use selection button, click on the shorter cross section and add it at the top and that also adds it to the other end and then click on this one and what I'm going to do here is run the cursor around until I get that um, crosshair appear which shows that it's snapping to a node. That's going to add it to the node here and then I'm going to click and drag this side down until I also see the crosshair change. Again with this I'm going to run it around until I get that node and that means I can put those on either side of the corner in balanced positions. Again we can set it to merge, call this inner frame and hit apply and I like that transition that looks a lot nicer. Now if we hit close to accept the creation of that the next thing I'd look to do is mirror that across the centers. Now if we select this and we use the mirror command so mirror selected objects flip about job center, create a mirrored copy and flip horizontal, I can see that one problem I've got here is that there's a small gap and that's just to do with the way that where the pixels may be situated in the part, so the pixels are what we use in Aspire to represent the 3D model versus where the vector is, so we've just got a small pixel gap there and this is an important thing to understand because what we really want to look to do when we create shapes like this that we want to repeat around a part is maybe um, put in a slight overlap at each end. So let's do that, let's just hit close on here, let's hit Control Z to undo that, let's select and delete that component we created. 
I'm just going to go to the drawing tab and I'm going to draw a polyline, click there, I'm going to zoom in on the end here, I'm going to snap to the end point there and I'm just going to come up 0.1 of an inch and I'm going to hit space bar so I can stay in the function and do the same on this side. So right mouse click then to exit that function. Now I'm going to hit F to fit. Actually we'll zoom in on the selected objects again. Select those top two pieces. Click on them again to go into transform mode. Hold control down and drag them towards the bottom here. Then I'm just going to zoom in towards the bottom. I want to turn those 90 degrees. So if I hit 9 on the keyboard twice that'll turn it 45 degrees and then 90 and now I'm going to snap to the end point there and just snap that to the end point there. Now we can grab this one, click on it again and snap that to the end point there. So if we hit F to fit, again select these and zoom selected. Now we've got two vectors here and then another two vectors at the top and another two vectors at the bottom and there I've just box selected all of those while holding the shift key down. And at this point we can go to the join command which I can click on this icon or hit J on the keyboard. Software tells me I've got six open vectors. After hitting join with that tolerance I'll have two and that's what I'm looking for. So if I hit join there and close now I've got two vectors where each one's just been extended by 0.1 of an inch. There's various other ways you could approach that as well but that's just a good solution to it. Now we can go ahead and repeat what we did before. I'm going to select my rails, go to the modeling tab, click on the two rail sweep icon, use selection. The direction has changed here, but that doesn't really matter. Um, that's just to do with the joining command there. But if we want to, we could come up to the top here, reverse rail and reverse rail. Now we've replicated the same set of parameters as we had before. I can select this vector, click and add it as the two end cross sections. I'm also going to take this and add it to the first node in there and the first node at the bottom here. And if we zoom in I can just drag that across and that will ensure we maintain that cross section into our shape. Now I'm going to zoom in here, I'm just hitting F on the keyboard in between these to zoom out and fit the job. I'm going to select this, again snapping to the node so I'm just looking for the crosshairs the cursor to change slightly and now I can drag that across there. I'm going to set this to merge and we'll call this inner frame and hit apply and close. And now if we take our object and this time if we mirror it so we can go back to the mirror command use the same options flip horizontal we're going to end up with a small overlapping piece but that should give us a nice clean transition between those and no gap. Now if we hit F to fit here I can select these two and we could do flip vertical but the shortcut key for this is control to make a copy, shift to flip about a job center and then V for a vertical so if we close that and with those objects selected go control shift V then I'm just going to create a vertical copy around the center of the part there. So at this stage I'm just going to come to the layers tab, I'm going to switch off the inner frame layer, I'm going to switch on the extrude pass layer and I'm going to click on that in order to make that current. We come back to the modeling tab, I'm also just going to switch off level 1 for a moment, I'm going to right mouse click and insert a new level, I'm going to right mouse click on that and rename it and I'm going to call that sweeps. I'm going to rename level 1 and just call that inner frame all. To create the other swept shapes in this design we're going to use the ability of the extrude and weave tool in order to take an existing component, in this case something that's roughly straight and horizontal, and then sweep that or extrude it if you prefer to think of it in that way along each of these curves in order to give us our nice transitional shapes. So first I'm just going to open another session of the software so we can look at how we can make this kind of horizontal component that we're going to use. So let's just start another copy of Aspire. 
I'm going to open an existing file and within the project folder there is a file called Art Nouveau Frame Sweep Vector crv 3d which I'm going to hit open on. Now this is just a simple vector that I've sketched in here that I thought kind of roughly represented this kind of um, nice organic shape that tends to be used a lot in Art Nouveau designs. Now what I wanted was it to kind of raise up and round but then dip in the middle. So we're going to take this vector, going to offset it inwards and we're going to do that by um, a value of 0.1 of an inch. I'm going to uncheck create sharp offset corners. Um, do not want to check delete original, do not need to check select new. Go ahead and hit offset and close. Now I'm going to take this outer vector, let's just tile the windows here and you can see I've got a very thin um, job setup which is just slightly larger than the object I'm creating and that's to maximize the quality and the revolu resolution in the part here. So taking the outside vector I'm going to go to the modeling tab I'm going to click create shape from vectors and I'm going to make this quite a thick shape so maybe around 70, 80 degrees something like that but I'm going to scale it to an exact height so I'm going to go to a height of 0.1 of an inch and hit apply so I want it to kind of round up at the size but then flatten off on the top so we'll call that um, shape 1 and hit apply then I'm going to click start new component and now I'm going to select the inner vector here I'm going to use the same parameters but I'm going to reduce the scale height to be a bit less than that and I'm going to set the combine mode to subtract and we'll just call that shape 2 and hit apply and if we look closely in the 3D view if I can just zoom in there you can see what's happening we've got a raised rounded shape for the outer and now we've got a recessed rounded shape for the inner now if we hit close what I want to do is dramatically smooth out that transition so I'm going to select both of these components I'm going to come up and click on the icon to apply the smoothing filter it tells me they need to be baked which is OK software will take a second to calculate that I want to check preserve transparency and I'm going to set this to max and I'm going to bake that and then I'm going to keep it set to max and just hit bake again so that's twice three times four times and then a fifth time and you can see each time it's just trans set that transition to be smoother and smoother blend until I've got this kind of shape I'm looking for almost like a bit of clay that I've just taken and pushed with my thumb to stretch it out when I like the way that looks we can hit OK and this is essentially the sort of base component that we're going to use to extrude around the shapes um, in the original frame design so now we can right mouse click on this and go to copy we can go back to our original session have my sweeps level selected if I right mouse click in here and go to paste we'll bring in that component what I'm going to do is just drag that off and to the bottom here because I don't need it to be within my main work area to access now I'm going to right mouse click and rename that and we'll call that sweep and just hit enter there so now we've got a component in here we're able to use that to extrude along these other curves and let's just show you how that will look by picking one of these and doing that so if we click extrude a shape I'm going to select a vector here use selection so there's my path I'm going to use component um, we've only got one visible component so I can just select that from the list what I want to do is stretch to the drive rail length and for the moment I'm not going to set that to weave and I'm just going to uncheck scale to exact height so we'll just leave that say component one there hit apply and you can see the way that that shape is going to be extruded along there now this shows me that I've got a bit of a problem at the moment with the shape I've created because it's going to give me too thick an end on some of the shapes and this is really where your design process becomes quite iterative so what I did after this was I went back and I started making edits to my original sweep shape. I started trimming some areas off to make them a bit more pointed and ultimately I ended up with three different designs that I'm going to use in this example. And So that was just quite an iterative process, maybe spent 10-20 minutes going back and forward trying different things, bringing them in and extruding them to see what the effect was. So let's go ahead and just reset this 
and close that and I'm actually going to delete that sweep shape we've got there. I'm going to go back to my other session of the software and I'm going to open a file that has got my edited sweeps in it. So if we click on this Art Nouveau Frame Sweep Components and hit open, don't want to change the say, um, save the changes to that. Here if you look at the vectors you can see I took my original shape, so this is the same one we created before, but then I've just edited that of a couple of different variations. This one at the bottom I just made it thinner, just trimmed a piece off and then smooth that with the sculpting tools and at the top here I've just made that a bit sharper and then just sharpened up the end as well. So now I've got three sweeps, one called A, one called B and one called C. So I'm going to select each of these, I'm going to right mouse click and go to copy and then I'm just going to come back here and right mouse click and we'll paste that in. Again I'm just going to click on those and drag them off to the bottom here and then just click to deselect. So after trying various iterations of these shapes with the paths you can see here and you're going to see me go through that process in a minute I realized that adjusting their sizes a little would uh, give me a better end result so I'm just going to come in here and select each of these individually I'm going to select A first and I'm going to click set selected object size and I'm just going to enter a height of 0.7 make sure link XY is checked and hit apply and close I'm going to select B set size there and I'm going to enter a height of 0.6 link XY checked hit apply and close and then finally C I'm going to set its size and again with link XY checked I'm going to set that to 0.4 and that was just playing around with those, trying them in different um, situations and different directions to see how they looked. So now let's look at the actual process where we extrude these vectors along but we also use things like the weaving function that's available within the software in order to create the effect of them overlapping with each other. So if we just click in the background there to deselect everything and then what I want to do is come into the extrude and weave tool and I want to select vectors in a very specific order and this is an order that I'm going to want to be able to remember and replicate. So I'm going to first select this vector here so this is the one that runs all the way from the bottom to the top we'll think of that as vector 1 then I'm going to select this one at the bottom which we'll think of as vector 2 and then I'm going to select this one at the top that we'll think of as vector 3 so it's important that I remember that order then I'm going to click on use selection the software is going to pick each of those now I'm going to come down and say I want to use a component and now this time I want to use component A again we've got this set to stretch the drive rail length so need to make sure that's still checked I'm going to set this to merge and we'll call this weave A and hit apply and just look what that gives us so at the moment I don't have it set to weave, we haven't checked this so it's just blending those shapes in with each other. So if we set this to weave and go add base I'm going to set a value of 150% and hit apply and see what that gives us. So now that's a much much more interesting effect going on there, I like the way that looks um, with it intertwining um, between each one. The other thing I wanted to change though, or I realised at this stage, was I wanted to have a more pointy look to this shape at the top here and also to the one at the bottom. So I really want it to go from a sort of wide end to a pointed end. Now this is all using the same component at the moment and I can only pick one component at a time when I do this extrude and weave function. But there is a way where I can still get it to weave even using two different components and how we do it is in two separate operations where we still keep those vectors as part of the selection so the software knows to weave up and down but that we say we don't want them to have a shape for that particular moment. So in this case what we can do is I can just right mouse click and make sure very carefully that the cursor is over this vector at the top and say remove all cross sections and you can see now it's still in the selection but now it's just got a green node on it. 
If we come down to the one at the bottom and do the same thing, right mouse click, remove all cross sections, that's the same. So now the only one that will have a shape applied to it is the first vector that we selected. The other two will still interact with it in terms of it weaving up and down, but there will be no shape applied to them. So if I hit apply, having removed those cross sections, we can see what that gives us. And if I look at the top here, it should be clear that that is still weaving up and down. Now what we can do is say start a new component and this is where it's very important we select the vectors in the same order again. Now that's difficult to do though because this grayscale is making it so that I can't see the vector underneath it. So before we um, continue we're just going to have to close out the function here and sort out why that is. So the order of grayscales is determined by the layer, layer that they're on. So if we come down to the layers tab and have a look we can see we've got a layer called layer 1 here, even though we actually deleted the one from this file earlier that had that. And where that's come from is that when we copied and pasted the components from one session of the software to another, they were on layer 1 and so the software created the same layer name for them to be put on in this session. So here what I'm going to do is right mouse click on this, go to delete, and I'm going to ask the software to move the data onto the extrude paths layer and hit OK. So now they're on the same layer as those vectors and I'm able to see the vectors through them and more easily select them. So let's come back to the modeling tab and also at this stage have a quick look at our component tree here. I'm going to add in a new level, right mouse click and insert new level. We'll rename that and I'm going to call that level weaves and I'm actually going to move the component I've just created onto there. I'm also going to set that levels combined mode to merge as well because I'm going to want it to merge with the inner frame components when we come to switch those back on later. So there we've had a brief interlude out of this but we can go back in now and complete this first um, weave that we've got here. So let's click to deselect. We've got our new level selected. I'm going to click on the icon to extrude a shape and now I want to select my vectors in the same order so I need the same three vectors so I'm going to select this one vector 1, shift and select vector 2, shift and select vector 3, use selection. This time I'm going to use a component that's got a point on one end which is component B, stretch to drive layer length still wants to be on, weave under over wants to be on but this time I need to make sure that I remove the shape we've already created from my selection. So I'm going to carefully put my cursor over what I've referred to as vector 1, right mouse click and say remove all cross sections. Now that's just got the green node on it and not the blue nodes so I know the shape is being applied to this one and to this one but that will still interact with this as part of our selection. So if we set this to merge I'm going to call it weave B hit apply and there we can see that now we've got our little point on there now at the top this one looks okay but at the top the point is in the middle I want it to be on this end so I'm going to right mouse click up here reverse rail and then hit apply again and now that swapped that around so now I've got the round end at the top it's coming it's weaving over and under because of the selection we've made and coming to a point now I'm going to click on start another new component and this time I'm going to select this vector in the middle, shift and select this one, shift and select this one, click on use selection and for these I want to use a shape which I've called C. I'm going to take all the other parameters as being the same and we'll call this weave C and hit apply and see how that looks. So that's shown me the direction that these are flowing in in terms of how they're going to weave in and out of each other because they're all part of the same selection. I think the direction looks good on all of those and so I am okay with the fact that we can go ahead and hit close at this point in time. And we've created all the shapes we need for half the frame. We can switch back on the inner frame and see how that interacts with what we've built. Now we can see if we zoom in there that we've got a bit of interference between that weave we just created and our inner frame where it gets quite thin there. So what I'm going to do is just select all the inner frame components, click on the properties icon and we'll just adjust the height for these. Maybe let's set that to have a shape height of 0.22 and a base height of 0.08 just to raise that up. 
hit the space bar there and now if we hit close and just deselect we can see that that frame is now clearing all those external shapes which is good. Next thing I want to look at here is starting to mirror some of these shapes across so it may be that I just select all of these weave um, components and we'll use the shortcut key to mirror across the center of the job control shift and H for a horizontal mirror. Now some cases you may see it not work as it did there and that's because the focus is in the component tree at the moment and that shortcut is not something that exists while the mouse is focused in the tree. So in those situations we need to come up and click on the tab here to focus on the 2D view control shift and H and now it'll copy those across. So just a useful little tip there for if you ever do something like a shortcut key and you don't see it work, it's maybe because of where you've got the mouse focused at that point in time. Now if we look at that, I can see that looks pretty nice. I've got a lovely symmetrical design. But as I look in the middle here, I've got this kind of disconnect. And I think it would be quite nice if we actually joined together a couple of these shapes. So I'm going to recalculate my weave for what we call weave B um, but we're going to add an extra little bit of vector on there in order to create an overlap a little bit like we did with the inner frame earlier so let's hit control Z on the keyboard to undo that operation there I'm going to select weave B and I'm going to hit delete on the keyboard in order to get rid of that next we'll go to the drawing tab I'm going to click and draw a polyline I'm just going to snap to the end point of my vector there and maybe just zoom in and pull that out 0.3 of an inch right mouse click to accept that then we'll just zoom out I'm going to click on that again hover over the middle and hold control and drag it down to the bottom here then I'm going to zoom in make sure I'm snapping to the end point and again just position that snapping there now I'm going to select these two vectors and I'm going to click join by moving the endpoints. Hit F to fit and do the same with the vectors. So I'll make sure I've selected them both at the top and click on the icon to join by moving the endpoints. Now we want to replicate the weave exactly as we did it before. So same um, selection of vectors make sure we pick the one that needs to be part of the weave process but not have the cross section or not have the um, weave shape applied to it so I'm going to go to the modeling tab and click on the icon to extrude a shape I'm going to select in the same order the first vector here shift and select the second shift and select the third click on the use selection button I'm going to use a component I'm going to select B and very important I remember to remove the shape from um, the part that we already have a shape for. So I'm going to hover over here, right mouse click, remove all cross sections. So I should only have the blue nodes on the top and the bottom vectors. I'm going to set this to merge. We'll call it weave B. Hit apply. And we should see what we're looking for there. Thick end at the bottom weaving around. Thick end at the top weaving up and down there. And if that looks good, then we can hit close. Now if we take the shape we just created, so let's just select weave B, let's actually move it down in the list there, so we've got weave A, B and C, and if we mirror that across again, so we could click on the mirror tab, flip about job center, create a mirrored copy, flip horizontal, we can see that looks okay at the bottom, we've got quite a nice blend there, but at the top here we've got a bit of a, an odd overlap, and that's just the fact that how that shape lifts up there. All we want to do is crop that back a bit before we mirror it over. So if we hit Control Z to undo that, I'm just going to draw a box, a rectangle here, snap to the corner, snap to the guideline at the bottom there, right mouse click, and then I'm going to just zoom in and using the arrow keys, I'm just going to jog that over while it's still selected. So just enough to get about an extra pixel of thickness on this when we crop it back. Now if I hit F to fit, I'm going to go to the modeling tab, I'm going to select the component there, shift and select the box and then click on the icon to clear the area of selected component outside the box. Now I'm just going to delete that box there, I'm going to select our component, I'll select it from here, a little bit easier to see 
and mirror that over again flip horizontal and see how that looks at the top and there we can see I've got a much nicer transition there if I wanted to I could crop even less off it's up to me as to how much I want to iterate on that let's just undo that again so we can close this and actually mirror all those components across there so let's select weave A, weave B and weave C go to mirror flip about job center create a mirrored copy flip horizontal let's just look down the z-axis close that and then double click in the background to deselect and take a look at what is pretty close to being our finished part so we could at this stage continue to adjust the model we could raise and lower different areas in respect to each other some of the places where it overlaps we may want to go in and smooth with the sculpting tools I'm going to leave it as is though and just move on and quickly calculate the toolpaths for this. So the main thing we need is an inner and outer boundary. Now we know we've got a nice vector for the inner frame so we may as well use that. If we go to the layers tab, switch on the inner frame, select that inner vector there. I'm going to right mouse click and copy that and we'll make a new layer that we'll call toolpath boundaries. And we'll make that red so that we can easily distinguish it from the others. For the moment, I'm just going to make that invisible and inactive and hit OK. Next, if we come to the modeling tab again, I want to select the outer shapes and fit vectors to those for the outer boundary. We don't have a vector that actually represents the outside edge. So that should be the two weave A models and the two weave B models. If we select those here, click on the icon to create a vector boundary from selected components. Now we can see if we zoom in that that's created a boundary around the outside edge here and that is grouped together the inner and outside edge of those components. So I just want to take the outside edge and keep that and delete the inside edge. Best way to do that is to right mouse click and go to ungroup objects. Um, we can just ungroup onto groups layer that will keep them all selected and then I can just hold shift down and deselect the outer vector and hit delete in order to get rid of all the others. Now we can select that outer vector, right mouse click and move that onto the toolpath boundaries layer. So if we come over to the layers tab and just switch off in a frame, switch off extrude paths and switch on toolpath boundaries and click on it to make it current, hit F to fit, we should see we've got an outside vector We've got this inside vector and all we need to do with this is just go into node editing, hit D on the keyboard to delete those extra little bits we added in there and select that then, control shift H, select both, control shift V, then select all four of those vectors and hit J on the keyboard and use the join command in order to make a single closed vector. So now we have one for the outside and one for the inside. Now we should come back to the modeling tab, check the overall height of our components here. So at the moment, uh, current max height is 0.3 of an inch. We could scale that up if we wanted. Maybe we'll scale it up to 3 eighths of an inch. Hit apply, close. So we'll just reinforce all those shapes. Hit OK there. Click on the icon to switch over to the toolpaths tab. Now I'm going to click on the material um, setup, the set button here. It's important to note that if you do plan to actually machine your own version of this design then you recalculate or calculate all the toolpaths using parameters and settings that are safe and appropriate for your particular machine, the tooling you have available and whatever material you're planning to cut it into. Here I'm going to set this up um, so that we're using say one inch thick piece of material, C0 off the top, datum in the lower left corner We'll put in a gap above of 0.05 of an inch there. Um, the other values look OK. We've got a little bit of a high Z home position. So we'll set that back to 0.5 as we're working with Z0 off the top of the block and hit OK. Now for the roughing, I may choose in this case to do something like a... Um, a raster rough because it'll probably get me a little bit closer to the finished part and there's not a lot of Z depth to work with on this in order to Z level rough it. So something like a quarter inch ball nose I may even choose to go over that in a single pass in this case it really depends how hard your material is. I'm going to choose the selected vector option I'm going to select 
the inner and outer vectors that we've got here let's just double check the settings for the tool so at the moment we've got a quarter inch ball nose selected it has got sort of roughing parameters here pass depth is set to two inch so I'm going to set that to point um, four there so actually we'll go point four five so we can cut this in a single pass and just reduce the step over down a bit maybe so we're not loading the tool up too much there again it's really going to depend on your material whether you be able to do that or not if we hit OK I'm going to put in a small boundary offset to allow the tool to sort of roll over past the edge so we'll go point two machining allowance point oh three and we'll call it roughing underscore 025 BN for ball nose and hit calculate so if we preview that we can see how that's going to look just going back and forward over the job there uh, with the ball nose tool next if we come in and finish cut this I'm going to use a 1 8 ball nose tool so we'll just check the parameters there maybe we'll reduce the feed rate a little step over I'm going to reduce down a smidge there hit apply and OK boundary vector offset just want to come past um, the edge enough 0.15 we'll call this finish 0125 BN for 8 inch ball nose hit calculate and again we've got the selected vector option here so there's our toolpath we can preview how that's going to look and that looks nice the detail looks okay there may be a couple of areas we'll have to go in there with a scraper or a file in order to clean out if you look at some of these gaps here sometimes that's unavoidable with certain types of designs when you get in shapes that are close together and overlap at least we can see that in the preview and choose how we may want to handle that either changing the design or using a smaller tool in those areas in this case I'm just going to leave it as is and assume I'm happy with the um, hand finishing on it the final thing I'm going to do is just with the same two vectors selected click on the icon to profile set a cut depth of Z equals so I know I'm cutting through the material I'm going to select quarter inch end mill I want to cut outside the part and then really it's just a case of choosing whether you want to do things like a separate last pass to give you a really clean edge um, or to add tabs in this case it may be that we have enough stock to mount this onto a sacrifice sheet and drill through from the back in order to screw the part and hold it in place so that we don't have to add tabs and we could do something like a separate last pass on here um, just a very small amount on there that we can just clean up all in a single pass at the end so we'll call this profile cutout 025 EM for end mill. Hit calculate there, hit preview, and we can see what that's going to give us. I can double click on my waste material, inner and outer, maximize the 3D view, and we can take a look at that nice frame design that we've created there. So let's conclude by saving this. We'll go to File, Save As, and we'll just call this Art Nouveau Frame Fin. Hit the Save button there, and so in the Project folder, you'll be able to find that file as we've created it here within the tutorial. This is something you could two-sided machine if you want in order to mill things like location for mounting hardware or an area on the back for putting a picture or a mirror, something like that into could be done with this. Mainly though, I designed this as an example so we could really explore the idea of how we can take vector paths and use the extrude and weave tool in order to create swept looking shapes derived from other components. We did start though by looking at how we can do a standard sort of two rail sweep for the inner frame on this and some of the issues that are involved with making sure that's going to mirror correctly around the center and also making sure we had a smooth transition around its curved corners. Then we moved on to the other paths and we saw how we can create other more or less straight components, bring them into a different session of the software if we want, and then actually start to apply those to an existing set of vectors, not only so they follow the curvature of them, but also so that they can interact with other vectors or the other parts of the selection and weave their shape up and down so they appear to intertwine with each other. So lots of interesting techniques covered in here. Um, that concludes this video. Hope you enjoyed watching it.